Owen, anyone on board? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, my friend, he's on his way. What? My friend, he's on his way. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm not quite sure where he's got to, though. We better hurry up and find him. We set sail on the uh, evening tide. Look, he's he'll, here or not. he'll be here. To be sure, his his uh, his wife's expecting a baby in a day now. He's in a hurry to get back to Waterford, you know. This is a mail boat, not a passenger ferry. It's not my job to get you merchant navy boys home to Ireland. And here's us, Tim. Can we be doing you a favour? Shipping Welsh coal all over the world. Should have saved ourselves the trouble. Hmm? Oh, oh, aye, and starved to death in your own country. Aye, tis true. Only way to feed our wives and chiddlers nowadays. Well, Welsh wives and children need feeding too. So get this packet moving. Your butt is probably with some harlot in Butte Town. <laughs> Not Jimmy, sir. I mean, he might have been a hothead when he was young, but since his last was born, he's a different man, do you know? What'd you say his name was? Uh, James Power. Known him all my life. <laughs> Born into a rebel family was. Funny, eh? Now, how could you be knowing what our forefathers went through in the old days of the land wars? Uh, rack rents, famine, murders. The powers owned hundreds of acres and no one ever knew what happened to us. Uh, James's family never saw any of it, to be sure. Yeah, hand to mouth, that's how we lived by. Nothing new there, boyo. Stood up about a bit of trouble in his day to James. It got arrested for um, riotous behaviour in bed. And I'm only 22. <laughs> yeah, is the, uh, is the year his mother died? 30 years ago now. I didn't like being told what to do, do you know? Not many young men do. Yeah. Never expected him to join up, but Redmond called on the volunteers to help the Allies, and you know, that was that. Of course, the Irish guards still parade the streets playing ragtime ditties and we got to thinking there was motorcycles to be had and we'd become dispatch riders. <laughs> Aye, it was uh, glamorous till you find out otherwise. Yeah, we thought if we could save a small nation like Belgium, we could certainly save a small nation like Ireland, you know. Boss, uh, the Horizon put an end to all that. The Horizon? The East Horizon. Come on, 1916? Terrible business. Few fanatics thought they could take on the whole British Army. Uh, damn fools. <laughs> a, a few um, two two uh, rifles, uh, 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 two or three revolvers and a couple of poxy shotguns. Now that's all they had. Uh, the Germans promised them arms, but the supply ship got scuttled. Uh, a few men like James, they tried to do their bit, mine, but... What do they do? Richmond Barracks in Dublin. They sent us. <laughs> There's uh, plenty of arms there, by. Well, a few of them caused a rumpus to distract the English officers. A, a few more of them raided the ammunition store. And then um, a few fellas went AWOL, met with the rebels, and held an auction. <laughs> an auction? We all had to take an oath, do you know, not to sell arms. So, you know, they threw up a pair of boots and asked for bids. Threw in a Lee Enfield rifle as a free gift. <laughs> Look, a, a, a bit of two quid for a saddle could get you 200 rounds of ammunition in the saddle bags. <laughs> Sounds dangerous. Yeah, if you got caught, they tortured you for fun. But James was lucky, you know. Uh, he got caught... Uh, Irregular conduct, being absent without a pass a couple of times, but nothing more. So what became of the rebels then? <laughs> they had Dublin on fire for six days. Didn't get them anywhere though. Our regiment was there to surrender. The looks on the faces and bodies we've been in the volunteers with, but we were soldiers, yeah? And if an officer said shoot, shoot was what you did, or he'd shoot you. 
Richmond Barracks is where they took the prisoners to. Put 16 of them in front of a firing squad and made sure there were Irishmen in that squad. Bloody hell. Made martyrs of those rebels that bloody firing squad did. <sighs> so did you ever fight the Hun? Yeah. Sure we did. We went to um, Alexandria, fought in the Battle of Jerusalem. Uh, James, right, James was awarded the Victory Medal and the British Medal. Can you imagine? Should I send them back with a Yeah, for from? sure he did. But not for spitting on him first, just to prove where his loyalties lay. Became a um, first lieutenant in the Third Battalion, East Waterford Brigade, uh, after the war, of course. He joined another army? <laughs> yeah, the RA. <laughs> D-I-R-A. It was the, um, the military wing, the old Republican movement. Not that Waterford so much guerrilla warfare mind you it, it was never um, big enough to get lost in there's only ever one way out did he settle down you don't put experiences like the rising behind you but yeah I, I mean the truce came in 21 uh james met julie about that time and then his uh, girls came along um i think it was uh, it was a uh, nelly in 24 and then Marianne in 26, and on uh, unemployment, of course. Now we work four hours on, four hours off, shoveling coal into ships' furnaces. It, it, there is no work more hot and filthy than that, to be sure. It's probably why he's not here now. In the Custom House pub, no doubt. No, I told you. He didn't even go ashore in the Rio Grande or the Rosario. He wants to get home to Ireland, to his family. Well, he'd better turn up soon. Hey, Owen, are we still set to make the evening tide? No, wait, he'll be here to be. <sighs> James Power never did make it back to his wife and daughters in Ireland. His body was found floating in the Glamorganshire Canal on the 19th of April, 1927. An inquest found no evidence of drunkenness or drowning. It seems James suffered a heart attack. He was 37. When Julia heard of her husband's death, she went into premature labor. James Power Jr. was born on the 7th of June, 1927. He died three days later. Julia died three days after her son. Three tragic deaths in less than a month. Nellie and Mary Ann were adopted and told that their father had drowned at sea. It was not until his celebrity grandson, Paul Merton, discovered his unmarked grave in Kitay's cemetery that the true fate of James Parr became known. <laughs> 